Hey, everybody, and welcome to the webinar today. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, countdown to cash in strategic prime day planning for Amazon sellers. And I have a great group of panelists with me today. Uh, I have Jessica Wright, who's going to be talking about harnessing the prime uh, harnessing prime day with off Amazon promotion. I'm going to be speaking about uh, getting your advertising optimized and some other marketing strategies for prime day. Nadav is going to be talking about how to manage your cash flow while scaling your business and improving your ROI. And Alex is going to be talking about navigating Prime Day promotions, balancing revenue growth with profitability and cash flow. Uh, it's easy to lose a lot of money on Prime Day. I've seen that happen to a lot of people. So we want to make sure that you don't fall into uh, those categories. So uh, I'll be going first and I'm just going to kick it off and share my screen. All right, we should be good now. Uh, so I'm specifically going to be talking about optimizing your marketing and ads for Prime Day. Uh, what are you going to? What are we going to learn in this? Uh, we're going to be talking about how to set up your ads uh, prior to Prime Day, how they're going to work during Prime Day, and then how you want to target uh, after Prime Day as well. Uh, because once all the the visitors have visited your product detail pages, you want to make sure that you're really taking advantage of that uh, traffic with retargeting campaigns and a lot of other strategies. Uh, a little bit about me, uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of AMZ Advisors. I used to be a consultant. I've been working in Amazon e-commerce for way too long. Uh, and I also manage over $20 million in advertising spend per year on Amazon. Uh, we are also a Amazon ads advanced partner, which is why we, uh, and we get that because we manage more than $20 million. So getting right into it, uh, the first thing you want to focus on is uh, really optimizing the bottom of the funnel. So when customers are coming to Amazon during Prime Day periods, they have high buying intent. So the best way to capture high buying intent consumers is by focusing on sponsored products uh, and sponsored brand ads, the ads that show up in search results pages. Uh, those ads are going to convert better than anything else that you'll see on the platform. And you also want to focus on the high intent keywords. So uh, that would be non-branded uh, keywords. Obviously, people searching for your own brand are hopefully going to buy your own product. You want to play run a little defensive advertising on that. But really, you want to focus on non-branded uh, keywords or generic keywords uh, for the main keywords that are related to your product. By focusing on those, you're going to get a lot more people that are really searching for that product. And it's going to help us with the retargeting once we get past Prime Day. Uh, again, like I said, focus on sponsored products. You're also going to want to use dynamic bidding. So when we look at how conversion rates change between uh, ad placements on the Amazon platform, top of page converts way better than anything else. So by using dynamic bidding, by using top of bid, uh, top of page bid adjustments, you're going to be able to capture a lot more conversions. The cost is going to be higher, but at the end of the day, what you're trying to do with Prime Day is to acquire customers for your brand. So by running those types of uh, dynamic bidding and bid uh, optimization, bid increase, uh, increases, you're going to generate way more conversions, way more uh, customers for your brand in the long term. And then finally, uh, use, utilizing ads that kind of highlight uh, your Prime Day deals uh, and the discounts that you're running. For example, many ad types will feature coupons. Many of them, when you're running lightning deals, will actually show what the lightning deal is within the ad. All of that's going to help. And that's where sponsored products and sponsored display, even on some product targeting uh, campaigns, are really going to help you stand out. The other thing you want to really focus on uh, during Prime Day and leading up to the Prime Day period is your mid-funnel consideration. Uh, so how are you targeting people that are looking at products or competitor products or categories that are similar to your product? Uh, the best way to do this is sponsored brand. And uh, we're going to do this by sponsored brands, category targeting, sponsored brands, product targeting. Uh, that's going to help create a lot of consideration. Uh, product display ads is also going to create consideration because it'll show up on the product detail pages of uh, competitor products typically in those ad spaces that are like right below the buy box and right below the uh, bullet points. It's a great way for customers to see your product page. A lot of people will go on Amazon. They're actually planning what they want to purchase when Prime Day comes. So by seeing your product ahead of time, it's going to create more consideration. It's going to drive more people uh, into you know, your brand funnel. And then from there, it's going to be a matter of converting them with the offers that we're running and all the advertising we're going to be running during the Prime Day period. Let's 
soon as possible. And then another really great way to use uh, advertising is going to be uh, with some of the e-commerce creatives that you have on the Amazon platform. You can actually feature customer reviews. Uh, and this could be a good way to actually show consumers ahead of Prime Day that, hey, customers really love my product. These are some of the reviews. Uh, and that's going to actually help drive more people to your product detail pages. It's going to become more and more valuable when we actually get into a retargeting phase. Another big thing that we focus on a lot is uh, how do we bring in some traffic from outside? And I'm not going to go into too too much depth with this, but one way that we focus on that is utilizing affiliate marketing uh, and PR. Uh, we work with a lot of affiliate networks uh, to promote our Prime Day deals. So we will help our customers run their promotions on major publications with influencers, whatever we can to try to drive as much visibility for their promotions on Prime Day and bring as many people to the Amazon platform. Again, the idea here is we want to create as many eyeballs on, on our products, uh, as many uh, product detail page visits as we can. And then from there, we're going to use all of that to actually scale up our advertising after Prime Day. Uh, the other main benefit of, of affiliate marketing is it also creates a, a good commission incentive for the affiliate themselves. So it's a win-win for both sides. It allows you to cap what your cost of advertising is in a sense, if a customer uh, purchases a product, if you're offering a 15% commission to a uh, affiliate to drive sales for your product, you know that your A cost on each sale is 15%, which in general, that's a great A cost for the Amazon platform. Uh, the other idea with, uh, Leveraging affiliate marketing is you can get uh, a lot of UGC content. Uh, UGC content actually comes off uh, as much more sincere with consumers right now. And it's we're seeing a lot of success with it with a lot of the brands that we are working with. Uh, so creating that kind of uh, organic content is performing very well from an affiliate standpoint. And then obviously, you just got to make sure you're tracking all of this. Uh, Amazon attribution makes it very easy to do that. So make sure that you are, uh, if you're a brand registered, you're utilizing Amazon attribution to track all the traffic that's coming to your product detail pages. And now that we have made it through Prime Day, we really want to focus on uh, how do we get the best, how do we get the most uh, return on the advertising dollars that we spent during the Prime Day period? Uh, display ads is the first one. So we're going to use Amazon. From a DSP standpoint, we might want to dive in and look at affinity groups of the people that visit our product detail pages and then start targeting those affinity groups uh, to see if we can drive more people to our product detail pages to drive uh, more conversions. Uh, and finally, um, offering different incentive, offer, offering uh, different deals to entice customers to return. This is going to be more with off-platform advertising. You might see this a little bit more with the DSP side. Uh, obviously offering another promotion or even offering a coupon to people who have uh, visited the product detail pages but not purchased is a great way to drive sales there. Uh, and then after that, obviously it just comes down to optimization. So you want to make sure that you're continuing to optimize the ad performance uh, by making your adjustments, by identifying which audiences uh, are performing better than others, scaling up the audiences that work, and then scaling back the audiences that don't. So... To sum it all up, it really comes down to uh, four different things that you want to focus on from an advertising standpoint. Really focus bottom of the funnel. Uh, customers are coming to buy products on Amazon. Run the sponsored pro uh, product ads. That's the best way to convert customers. And that's pure bottom of the funnel. That's going to lead to more revenue in the long term. Uh, middle funnel, you want to maximize the number of page visits. You want to get as many people as possible to consider your product by coming from uh, related products in the category, from coming, coming from main competitor products. Getting them to your product detail page is going to be more benefit. Is going to be very beneficial when we get to the last step. Uh, using affiliate marketing or off-platform traffic to drive people to Amazon is going to help increase those audiences for retargeting, and that's just going to continue to drive additional conversions. If you need any help with your advertising, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Obviously, we're getting a little close to Prime Day at this point, but uh, if you get in touch with us quickly, uh, we will be sure to help you with that. Uh, Thank you guys. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Uh, next up, we have, uh, let me just double check. Uh, next up, we have Jessica. Uh, so Jessica, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Awesome. Thanks for the intro. I'm going to try and get a screen share going here. Make sure can everyone see that presentation. Um, 
I am not the best at staying on script, so there's a good chance I will abandon this deck halfway through, but I'm going to try to stick with it to keep me on track for timing. Um, so as Mike mentioned earlier, I'm going to be talking today about harnessing the Prime Day um, with off Amazon promotion, and that can be um, to drive traffic to Amazon or to drive traffic to other sources. There is plenty of Prime Day to go around across the internet, not just on Amazon. So just really quickly, a little bit about me. I am Jessica Wright, um, Director of People and Partnerships with AO2 Management, which is really a one-stop digital shop. We help brands with anything from their website and social media to Amazon, Walmart, um, Across the board, if you want to elevate your brand online, that is what we are here to help you with, right? We don't want to just take a little piece of it and, and manage that, but we want to make sure we're helping with consistent branding across the board. Me personally, um, my background is about 16 years at this point in e-commerce, so like Mike, way too long. Um, I got started on the brand side, working in toy manufacturing, and from there um, moved into um, the service provider side, because I realized just really my passion is um, helping multiple brands to have success with e-commerce. So um, that is what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, just getting to educate people um, in our organization and our wider audience, and then work with great partners to curate and present content like this. So jumping right in, if I can advance here. Okay, so just a couple of quick Prime Day numbers. Um, some things you may have already seen, but I think it's helpful to set the scene for what's going on both on and off Amazon. Last year, the estimated total for total sales on Amazon for Prime Day was 12.9 billion. Um, that represents 3.75 million items purchased and $2.5 billion saved um, by those members shopping, which are great numbers. But when you look at the off Amazon sales for that same time period, retailers other than Amazon online accounted for $12.7 billion in sales during the Prime Day window. Um, obviously, we know that's a lot of different retailers and people are doing their general, um, you know, day-to-day -day household shopping off Amazon during those Prime Day windows as well. But what's important is when we look at the those non-Amazon retailers during that time frame saw 52% increase in clicks 2022 to 2023, right? Prime Day is not the same day every year. It moves around. So there's a very clear correlation to that 52% increase in traffic for those two days that um, is helping to generate that $12.7 $12 billion in sales. There's a very clear correlation that that is coming because Prime Day is happening on Amazon and the rest of internet retail is seeing an uptick because of it. Um, and so the rest of this, I'm going to stay super high level, just kind of giving you some ideas of what you should be looking at. But if you take away anything at all from my presentation, the one thing that I want you to take away is there's $12.7 billion available for you to take a piece of off Amazon during Prime Day. Um, and then just another quick stat, most of the purchases during the two-day Prime Day window happen on that first day. So, you know, these incre increased clicks begin two days before, even before that people are researching, but people really go hard on that first day. So just kind of keeping in mind as you're driving traffic with your social media and other things, um, that first day is going to be the big piece to, to take advantage of. 61% of those purchases happen on that first day of the two-day window. Um, again, talking about two things, promoting off Amazon for on Amazon, because there's a ton of opportunity for that. Mike already touched on a couple of those different opportunities. And then promoting off Amazon for off Amazon. There's money to be had both places, so why not go after all of it? Um, so with Amazon, obviously, I don't want to tell you to drive all of your traffic away from Amazon on Prime Day. There's opportunity offsite, but there are 200 million plus paid Prime memberships, right? Those people are very loyal to Amazon. There's a reason that they're Prime members. For Prime Day, they're going to have suggestions coming at them from every angle. They're going to have stuff in their cart that's already, you know, stuff that they want, that they're getting notifications or discounted. They're going to have, you know, suggested products to search. When they're ready, they can easily just one click add that to their cart or one click check out. Um, their payment information is saved and they're getting free Prime shipping. So you're like, if you're selling on Amazon, you want to be promoting for Amazon as well, but there are a limited number of spots for promoting on Amazon, right? You can't win every placement. So you, there's a lot more competition. 
on Amazon, even if you're utilizing PPC and Amazon posts and, you know, Amazon live and content creators, you're going to run out of space. There are a lot of people competing for that. So we really encourage you to take a look at what you can do off Amazon to drive traffic to Amazon. And I guess if the amount of off Amazon dollars was the first thing to take away, definitely I want you to take away that there are two main reasons to drive offsite traffic to Amazon during Prime Day. Um, Amazon's algorithm really rewards offsite traffic with organic rank increase. You make your products more relevant to the general population. So that's more relevant to the Amazon algorithm. So just by driving that offsite traffic, you're increasing your organic rank, super important for Prime Day, but beyond really, you're setting yourselves up for a very successful Q4 if you start to drive that offsite traffic. And then something that Mike also mentioned already, there are a couple of tools that you can benefit from in, in the form of fee credits during um, during any offsite promotion, which is Amazon attribution, which is a great way to track that traffic from offsite to Amazon, and then the brand referral bonus, which is a problem program that can help you earn additional incentives, right? So you drive that traffic, um, it's trackable, Amazon knows when offsite traffic made a purchase, and then they're giving you credits towards your selling fees for driving that traffic in. So those are the reasons to drive your offsite promotions to Amazon um, during Prime Day, but there are plenty of ways to do that. And you have a lot more freedom in how you do that off Amazon than on Amazon. When you're promoting off Amazon to your existing customer base, right? So that can be your SMS messaging. That can be an email list that you have from your off Amazon customers. Obviously that stuff is not coming from Amazon. Amazon took away um, customer engagement, which is the saddest thing that's happened to me in 2024. Um, but if you have off Amazon um, customer lists from, you know, just everything that you've done on your own website or through social media, you can you can market to those channels. You can do your SMS, you can do your email, and then the social marketing, and all of that can be you know pushed back to Amazon, and you can get credits for that. So um, staying super high level, just encourage you to utilize all of those different formats. But I really wanted to talk about the social piece because that's really what ties together driving traffic to your Amazon sales, but also being able to drive traffic to non-Amazon channels and have that checkout occur there. So mentioned already, you can post things on social media, you can have that traffic go to Amazon, but a couple of stats that are really important to know about social commerce. So actually having people check out on your social sites. U.S. retail social commerce sales are expected to surpass the $100 billion milestone in 2025. We're not quite there yet, but we're halfway there. Um, that's a over a 22% increase over the previous year. And this is per eMarketer's September 2023 forecast. In that same forecast, um, it was expected that 6.6 .6 of total e-commerce sales in 2024 will be from social commerce. So that is people going to your social media sites and actually checking out there, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok shop. Um, so when you're thinking about 12.9 billion on Amazon during Prime Day, 12.7, uh, billion off Amazon and other e-commerce during Prime Day, 6.6% of that to be captured through social media is a, a really big piece and something that if you are a kind of established there, it's something to go after. Just a couple other points on the social media piece too, things you can be doing or should be thinking about. If you're driving that traffic to Amazon or expecting them to check out on, Am uh, on social media, last year, Prime Day, Prime Day 2023, Prime Day, or Amazon Prime Day 2023, those hashtags on TikTok alone were viewed at least 400 million times. So however you want people to check out, that is a ton of traffic to get attention to your products and send traffic wherever you want them to check out. Don't be sleeping on social commerce. There's a lot of opportunity there. And then I'll just briefly gloss over this one um, because Mike mentioned affiliate marketing. Amazon has a new tool for that creator connections. That is out of closed beta. It is something that all sellers are being um, onboarded into now. Although you may not have, have it available yet, everyone's going to be onboarded by the end of 2024. So check your advertising console. If that's available, that's a great way to start doing some of that affiliate marketing that Mike described to connect with influencers who can actually promote your product on and off Amazon. Um, and if you can sign up and start doing that now, you've got about a month to start to build some traction for that affiliate marketing. Um, and then the very last thing, because I know I'm running short on time now. Um, so just another super high level. We talked about driving traffic to Amazon, to social posts. There are other channels out there and you're likely selling on them. 
even if those channels are not running their big promotions in cadence with Prime Day this year, which it doesn't look like they're going to be doing target deal days, which often ran during Prime Week in the past or Prime Day in the past, looks like it's probably been replaced with Circle Week this year. That was in April. Uh, Way Day for Wayfair was in May. Walmart Plus Week is coming up next week, June 17th through the 24th. So even though none of these big marketplaces are going to be doing a massive promotion for Prime Day, we, we saw all of the details already. We know the numbers are there. There's going to be traffic across the internet looking at those sites. If you're selling on those sites, use their promotional opportunities. Use all of those things we already talked about to drive traffic to those sites as well, because there is opportunity to take advantage of shoppers who are looking at all of the marketplaces outside of Amazon, all of the traditional retail sites um, to do some shopping during those days as well. Um, and I think that's all I have time for. So if you have questions, I think we have a Q&A at the end, or please feel free to um, connect with me as well on LinkedIn. Happy to answer questions offline. Awesome. Thank you for that, Jessica. And we will have a Q&A session at the end. So if you have any questions that come up, feel free to add them into the Q&A or into the chat and we'll be sure to get to them. Uh, we've already had a few questions submitted ahead of time too. So we will definitely uh, hopefully be able to touch on everything. And I love the presentation, Jessica, as well. Like I'm big on social commerce and I'm really big on the affiliate side. Uh, but like you said, affiliate takes time. So if you want to do that, you got to start now because it's constant communication back and forth. Uh, Awesome. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, Nadav. So Nadav, why don't you uh, go ahead? Okay, thank you. I'll share my screen. Okay. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Nadav. I've been uh, doing e-commerce for 10 years. Uh, started a few brands, uh, bought a few brands. Today we have... Uh, about four brands, all over seven figures. And started Capic two years ago, really to help brands grow, uh, mostly private label sellers, but any e-commerce uh, uh, sellers out there that need to grow their business. At the end of the day, we understand that in order to grow, we need product to sell. And that's usually the biggest problem. Uh, 80, 90% of our capital is tied up on inventory. And hopefully if we're doing well, which is, that's the idea of the, this platform selling on Amazon for to 400 million customers, you can grow from a thousand units to a hundred thousand units within a few months. And that growth spurt involves a lot of capital, a lot of uh, financing and also planning the right type of cash flow so that your business can grow substantially and stay in uh in stay steady and not get into a risk uh cash flow risk or cash flow restraints uh when doing this uh that's why we started uh we have a very unique solution i'm going to talk about how we can grow the business with steady cash flow and improving roi um so when when managing uh, online we have three different types of investments. One's uh, employee operational. Obviously, those are monthly expenses like rent, software, and our employees. The second one is advertising, which usually has a very fast ROI. You advertise, you get a sale, you get your money back, hopefully within a month or two, if Amazon didn't take it all into reserves. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then there's inventory. We're inventory. On average, you're talking about nine, six to 12 months minimum, uh, on average nine months from the day you make a purchase order from your manufacturer. It's usually about three months to even four months until it gets to Amazon and starts selling. And then hopefully you bought inventory with the right amount, four to six months. That's what's going to take you to sell off that inventory. Therefore, that's a relatively in the retail world that's a very long uh, ROI on investment. And it's a very unique also cash flow management that really needs to be understood by sellers when managing their business because it also has a very different uh, uh, cash flow and, and payment terms. Some sellers might have payment terms with their manufacturers, some don't. On average, you need to put a 30% deposit. A month or two later, you need to add the 70%. Then while it's being shipped, you need to pay the shipper. 
And then hopefully four to six months, you'll start getting money back from Amazon with a 30 day uh, margin on that too. So it's very important to understand when managing your cash flow, understanding all these expenses and where you're using this, uh, your money in the right way. All of us is managing business. We, we're we managing risk and we're managing our capital and we're investing. I mean, at the end of the day, you have a certain amount of money that you're investing in your business and you need to invest it in the best way so that you can grow your business and get the most return on investment on your when while you're investing this money. So therefore, uh, looking at outside capital we feel, I feel, is the best way to grow your business. Uh, a lot of people are afraid to take outside capital. But when you look at the retail world or even large companies like Google or Microsoft, or they're all, they're all public traded in order to raise funds, to raise money from other people. And this is uh, mitigating your risk. As soon as you have other funding giving you funds, you're able to mitigate. They're taking some of that risk. And it's giving you the, the capital you need to grow. Uh, but when looking at this, it's also very important to understand the right type of capital you're taking. Because most of the finance solutions out there for uh, e-commerce are mostly revenue financing. And revenue financing is great for advertising or even if you need some extra cash flow now for your uh, employee or operations but it's very bad for inventory because if you want to buy $100,000 worth of inventory today you, and you only have $30,000, you need to know you have $100,000 to, to buy the inventory. If you take revenue financing, you'll get money from your from that revenue financing today, but you're, but you're already going to start paying it back from your next month's revenue and the next month and the next month. And like we like I explained before, it could be three to four months before you even start selling the first unit. So you've already paid back half of the revenue financing before you actually sold anything. And you still had to pay the manufacturer when they needed to be paid the 70% and the shipping. So this doesn't really add capital to what you had. If you had 30,000, in general, it postponed your cash flow. It gave you capital the day they gave you the 100,000 but it didn't add more capital to your total amount of capital that you can have tied up in inventory. Therefore, it's very important to find the right type of financing that's efficient to what you want to invest in, which our, our expertise is only in inventory. We're here to help with the inventory financing. If you use it the right way, basically you can free up a lot of your capital that's stuck in, in inventory. And then once you freed that capital, you can use it for advertising or for other, ex or even expanding, creating new products, riskier uh, uh, investments because you freed up capital from inventory. Now, as a private seller, I hope you're familiar with these numbers. You buy a product for $10, you're selling it for 35. Hopefully you're making at least 20% net margin on that, meaning your ROI on investment on the $10 that you brought cost of goods is going to be between 70 to 100%. I mean, you're going to make seven to $10 profit, which is great. I mean, in the, in the retail world, they don't make that much either. That's almost doubling your money from every order. But unfortunately, the, the, the e-commerce space can grow much faster than doubling itself every nine months. And you need to have you need to plan your next purchases because of course uh, we have multiple orders in in parallel i mean if i bought 5000 units it's going to take me 9 months to sell them all off but already after 4 months i got to make another order and most likely hopefully i got to make an order for 15000 units and then another one for 30000 units so i'm always going to have cash flow problems you can never scale your business just on profit if you want to scale your business, you have to have extra capital to be able to scale. Our solution is that we partner with our sellers uh, to give uh, the that type of financing on the inventory. We approve your purchase order in advance. 
will tell you, okay, you can buy $100,000 worth of uh, inventory. You put down the 30%. We'll pay the 70000 when the product's ready. So even if it was delayed because of the manufacturer, it doesn't affect your fees. You have no repayments. It doesn't cost you anything. We'll pay the shipping when they need to be paid. And the repayments are connected directly to the sales rate of that purchase order of that inventory. So you can sleep well at night knowing that you don't have any payments, no cash flow restraints. You're basically getting almost like consignment. Buy as much inventory as you want, pay it back when it sells, and not have to worry about problems. Even if the sales rate goes faster, you can pay it back earlier. If it goes slower, then we'll spread out the payments. That's the idea. And using that type of financing, basically, even if our financing costs on average, I don't know, per deal, probably around 10%. So you're going to make 60 to 100% ROI on everything that we're buying. We're taking 70% of the risk in this way. And you're putting 30% down. And we're only making 10% profit. You're making 70 to 100. So on your $30,000 investment now, Instead of making a 70% ROI, you're going to make a 210% ROI. And that's very important to understand that, that you're able to improve your return on investment, make more money from your money. But more than anything, my, ex, my, my uh, experience is while you're growing, you want to scale your business to the maximum possible. Looking at profits is not the most important thing in the first year of uh, building an e-commerce space. You want to grow it as fast as possible and then start tweaking your profitability. So find the right partners, find the right investors, find that capital to be able to grow as much as you need with the right cash flow, of course, because when you don't have good cash flow, you can't sleep at night. You really can't deal with the, the positive things of your business. You're dealing with paying suppliers and paying people when you don't even have the money. And that's the most important thing. Um, I think that was very short <laughs> for a pretty important uh, subject. Uh, we're here to help. Anything you want, you can uh, file for a application on our site. We're very fast. 24 to 48 hours, it can be approved on a deal. And we're basically partnering with you on that deal. We're as partners that take 70% of the risk, we're also here to help if there's a problem. If a listing gets closed, we're going to help you open it. If uh, your store gets shut down, we're going to help you open it because if we can't, how are we going to get our money back? So that's another important thing. We're more than just a funder. We're a partner and we look at it that way. And we know that our customers are able to triple and quadruple their growth and revenue every year with us as partners. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for that, Nadav. And yeah, cash flow is an incredibly uh, complex thing to understand. Uh, it's why I frequently reach out to experts uh, like yourself and also like Alex, uh, who I recently spoke to about cash flow as well. So uh, kind of coming full circle here. Uh, thank you again, Nadav. Uh, and I just reminded everybody, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit them. Uh, we will definitely get to them in the Q&A section. Uh, Alex, why don't you go ahead and uh, take things away from here? Perfect. Can you hear me okay? I can, yeah. That's great. Yes, cash is king. It is true. Let me just share my screen. Um, Just confirm you can see that okay, and I'll begin. Yep, we got it. Perfect. So I'll be talking to you today about the, the truth about profiting from Prime Day. So a slightly contrarian view. Why more sales might be a bad idea okay so this is uh, an interesting piece to start with and i appreciate this is a one-way conversation no one can answer this but how did last prime day work out for you really so if you were to look back at uh your best performing skew your hero skew from last year and you you were to go back to your your numbers and say your goal was to use prime day as a ranking tool to grow in ranking if you line up your Helium 10 or whatever sort of line ranking graph you use and you look at the dates, did you see a ranking increase due to Amazon Prime Day? And if you did, did you were you able to build on that? Were you able to stay ranked and continue up? Or was there a, 
slow deviation back to your long run mean. If it's the former, that's fantastic. If it's the latter, this might be interesting for you. So did Prime Day actually help you? Did your revenue grow after Amazon Prime Day and retain that growth in quarter three and quarter four and beyond? Can you actually attribute an increase in profits to any of your Prime Day promotions? Or did you just make Amazon richer while failing to achieve your goals, failing to fill your own pockets? Of course, this is going to be very dependent on brands. Some brands use Amazon Prime Day and have amazing success stories for it. This is more talking about the other sort of 80% of brands who maybe get a little bit disappointed from Prime Day results and maybe don't have their numbers all lined up in terms of what they want and the end achievement and any sort of long-term gain from it. So the argument here is that most Amazon sellers use Prime Day the wrong way. They follow the mantra of more discounts will eventually mean more money. And it's it's a bet. I'm going to place a bet on future income. And it's okay if we, we break even or even make a loss, as in cases with many brands on Amazon Prime Day, because we're going to get that ranking increase. We're going to get that revenue improvement. But in a lot of cases, they're dead wrong. In fact, heavy discounting is only the right strategy in certain conditions for certain SKUs. And I'll explain in just a second. First, for my, and I think six minutes is pretty optimistic, but why should you give me another six minutes? My name is Alex Gardner. I'm the, the co-founder at FBA. We're a financial service hey, firm. For Alex, your, your audio is cutting a little bit. Oh, sorry. Is it better now? Uh, yeah, try speaking again. Sorry. Hey. All right. Yeah, I think you're better now. Yeah. Okay. I've got to slow it. So my name's Alex. I'm the co-founder at no, FBA. It's, it's it's doing the same. Oh, really? Sounds like your uh, uh, your microphone or something. Let me disconnect my microphone to see. Now we don't hear you. Now you don't hear me at all. Ah, uh, now I can hear you. Okay, it's a little softer, but yeah, you sound better. Yeah, I'll just get a bit closer to the Mac. It might be a microphone issue. Um. So my name is Alex Gardner. I'm the co-founder at FinFBA. We're a financial services firm for uh, mostly FBA clients, but online brands in general. Um, I'm an ACA from the UK. Get rid of that. Sorry. Uh, we work. I work at PwC, or I worked at PwC in London in mergers and acquisitions. I then moved into FBA, started my own business, ran that for six years, and grew that. Um, so the idea is I, I get the numbers and I also get the process when it comes to FBA. Um, and my co-founder, he's a few years older than me. He's an expert in turnarounds for small businesses, six to seven figures in a variety of, um, a variety of niches and areas. And he's great with numbers. So we understand how making sure that you're building a business that spits off mass maximum cash flow is super important and something that sometimes gets overlooked when building an Amazon FBA brand. And I'm going to distill what we know about juicing Prime Day into the next five minutes now. So what is the purpose of Prime Day for brands? Turns out there's 10, and maybe you can think of more, but um, on the next slide, I'll show you. Here are 10 of what I believe to be the most important strategic objectives of an FBA brand with um, Prime Day. And um, I believe a copy of this will be taken out, so I won't dwell on that too long. That might be a little bit overwhelming. Maybe it's not, maybe it's everything you've seen before. But to figure out which of those 10 strategies is best to use, there is key as three key questions that you must ask yourself. Um, and before the questions, I mean, this has been touched upon, I think by everyone today, Optimize, optimize, optimize. Make sure that you've got the processes and the tools in place so that you're confident that you're getting the best click-through rate, the best conversion rates, and the best customer experience possible for your SKUs. And then from there, we look at the financial questions here. So what is your EID per SKU? And what this means is excess inventory days. And the calculation is pretty simple. It's just your inventory days. If you don't know what that is, that's just uh, your average daily sales 
and then you take into account your inventory and that's how many days of inventory you have left and your excess inventory days is anything you have over the amount of time it would take to get a restock so maybe you're being restocked in 40 days and you've got 50 days of inventory days so you've got 10 excess for example if your eids is negative do not run promotions or excessive ads why you're going to run out of stock with normal demand participating in prime day will worsen the issue the focus on that skew should be profitability this is pretty obvious but if you do not have clarity on this number you might just miss it and the amount of times i've seen eight figure sellers just go out of stock because they're not looking at certain SKUs and they just miss it or there's an issue with the program they use and they miss it if it's positive you have positive excess inventory days you've got something to play with and you can move on to question two um, and that is because you've got excess stock obviously so you can increase sales without worrying about stock out and you can use prime day to turn some of that into cash so you should be looking to turn that excess stock into cash to reinvest question two what margins do you have to play with and most people have a good idea on what their margins are if without taking into account ad spend, you're already under 25%. Unless you're heavily pushing, um, you're a very capital rich company and you're just pushing sales and you're looking to make profits in the future, it's probably a good idea to avoid excessive promotions. If you're in this range, which is hopefully most people, this is a position where you can start taking charge of Prime Day with sophisticated strategies. And that have, uh, you know, it's not all everything to the wall, let's maximize sales, but you've got position there to gain from using promotion strategically. If you're above 40%, especially if you've got excess inventory days, you're in an incredible position. One little footnote to that is the price elasticity of demand. If you don't know what that means, it means how sensitive your product is to price increases or decreases. And if you haven't tested this, this is a very important metric to test. Um, so if you know that you can't really increase your prices, there's too much competition. But if you decrease your prices, there's a big increase in demand. You know that that sort of skew is potentially great for Amazon Prime Day. If you're selling something that is a high value uh, skew and you actually don't see much of an increase, increase in demand from reducing your price, then you maybe have to take that into consideration as well. And the final question, what stage of the product life cycle are each of your SKUs? And to give you a quick little breakdown, this is what a normal product life cycle would look like. You have introduction and growth, which is essentially for Amazon sellers, the launching phase. You'll then hopefully hit maturity as you gain ranking. And at that point, you should be churning out cash, churning out profit, getting the reward for your previous efforts. And you want to stay there for as long as possible, but unfortunately, decline can happen as well. So if you're in the intro or the growth stage, it's another reason to drive sales with promotions. And especially if you've got excess inventory days, good margins, go for it. If you're in the maturity stage, this is the moment where you're meant to actually be rewarded for your efforts. So you shouldn't be doing excessive promotions. You should be having very clear, sophisticated strategies in place and tracking those daily to make sure that you're actually being rewarded now for your SKUs that are in the maturity phase. And then if there's anything in the decline phase, you can be in the decline phase for so many different reasons. So this really depends, but especially if you have a lot of inventory on it and it's just not working, you need to turn that back into cash and you need to turn that back into cash as quickly as possible. Um, Again, maybe there's a chance to relaunch. Maybe there's a chance to do another strategy that gets you better money. But getting that sell through quickly is going to give you cash. And cash, as we know from today, is king. So an example, we've got a product here with high excess inventory days, high margin growth. I already spoke about that. Aggressive, improve organic rank. At that point, it's a very convex bet. And what I mean by convex bet is that you can put more money into it and it's much more likely to yield a disproportionately high benefit in the future. So at that point, at the early stage with good margins and high amount of inventory, you should be going for it. If you don't have excess inventory days, maybe you've got a lower profit margin. And remember these margins don't take into account TACOS. So maybe this is a, 
a 15% margin realistically, you're already in the mature stage and you're just churning out 15% profit margin sales. If you're going to do promotions, I would focus more on quantity-based promotions, bundling promotions. I wouldn't focus on single unit promotions so much in an excessive way. Use your high EID SKUs as loss leaders to bring people to your mature SKUs. And another point is if your margin is that low, that implies you're struggling to increase your prices, which might mean high price elasticity of demand, which means if you are aggressive with your strategy, you might get an initial ranking improvement, but it will then drop back down after you go back to the same price. So there's, it's not so much of a convex bet, it's a worse bet. You should be at this point taking your profit, taking your cash flow, using that to reinvest. Uh, one final quick example, you've got an even lower margin and you're in decline, calculate your daily sales target for liquidation, plan aggressive promotions if you've just got way too much stock, um, and also consider if there's any other options like a relaunch strategy or any way to resurrect the SKU. So an important footnote again, after these three questions, you always, the, the answer that you get for each SKU based on those three questions always has to be secondary to cash flow. Every company, especially seven to eight figure brands at this point, should be producing cash flow forecasts. And they should also have sensitivity analysis on those forecasts to ensure that if sales are less than expected, because we know Amazon is volatile, you don't run out of cash. And this year, Amazon aren't going to underwrite loans anymore. So you're going to be offered way more loans directly from Amazon. You'll be looking for companies like NADAVS to try and get cash flow. And interest rates are high right now. So you really don't want to be stuck in a loan cycle. You want to make sure you're not running out of cash. And critically, you have enough cash for your quarter four restock, which is probably coming up. So at FIN FBA, happiness is positive cash flow. Next steps for anyone that wants to take anything from this is do a detailed analysis of each SKU, work out the answer to each of those three questions per SKU. Be clear on why you're taking a risk because any excessive promotions or PPC is an investment of capital, you should ensure that you're getting something for that. Whether it's more profit, more growth, higher ranking, you should have clarity on what you want to get and make sure you actually get it. See if you've been getting it in previous years, adapt your strategy. And yeah, try and avoid loans as best you can. Obviously options like NADAV sound great, but in general, high interest loans, not good. Amazon won't be giving you loans. Use your cash as much as possible. Revenue is vanity, profits is sanity, cash flow is king. And I believe, yeah, that's the last slide. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. You made some really good points there. And uh, I would agree with you on promotions. Like going crazy on, on high discounts with lightning deals is not always the best strategy. We actually tell most clients not to do that. Uh, we focus on lower percentage discounts yeah. and it really depends on the model as well. Is your product uh, consumable? Yeah. Nowadays. Exactly. Is your product a consumable? Are customers going to come back and buy it? Is there is there a longer customer lifetime value? Yeah. If you get repeat purchases, then you can be a bit more aggressive. Of course, if everyone's if they're buying your product every three months, that's great. If they're buying it once every few years, the customer acquisition is not so exciting. So you have to think about that. Exactly. Very good points. Awesome, guys. I uh, really appreciate it. Now we're going to move on to the Q&A section. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit them uh into the q a or into the chat uh first question we have is uh i think this is for jessica uh how can i use data from prime day to elevate post event sales across other channels yeah and this is something i mean probably a lot of people can can weigh in on but um i think some of those things that we talked about like amazon attribution that's going to give you a lot of information about like what kind of um what off-site um channels are great drivers for your Amazon business. You know, um, if you if you use those methods during this prime day to promote your prime day events, you're gonna have a ton of information in Amazon attribution to help you understand, you know, is Facebook a good source of traffic for me? Or is it all coming from my email campaigns? Um, so just understanding what pulls those levers is something that then you can obviously turn into planning for, for future opportunities. And the same with just, um, you know, detail page visits, um, you're going to get hopefully a lot more sales during Prime Day. So that's going to result in hopefully a lot of new reviews 
that new review information is going to give you feedback to to craft things for the future. So, you know, it's a little bit of every piece of your your detail page, your sales data, your attribution and traffic data that's going to really give you the feedback you need to make changes across the entirety of your, um, you know, your Amazon business. Yeah, I think I think that's great. And uh, leveraging that data for figuring out this channel drove traffic that converted. Now, how can I use it to drive traffic to other platforms? Makes a ton of sense there. Um, awesome. Uh, should I continue to advertise after Prime Day? Uh, I think I'll answer this one. Uh, yes, you do want to continue to advertise after Prime Day. It's just that your advertising strategy is going to change. So uh, experienced sellers are already aware, but as we come into the Prime Day period, we're already seeing bids go up. Bids are going to be extremely high during the Prime Day period. As we move past Prime Day, and a lot of the focus is, again, going to be on sponsored products, we want to make sure that we are decreasing those bids over time. And the sh that uh, additional budget is going to shift a lot more to retargeting and re-engagement uh, with customers that have either purchased the product. If I have consumable, I want to retarget purchases to try to drive, subscribe, and save. Uh, if I don't have a consumable, I want to retarget customers that visited the page and didn't purchase the product. All of that's going to lead to additional sales uh, in the long term, and that's just going to benefit your brand. So yes, you want to continue to advertise, just that your advertising strategy is going to shift a little bit once we get past Prime Day. Uh, next is uh, a question for Nadav. Uh, how do you qualify for funding? Uh, we, we, we need you to have history. Basically, if you're a store selling for about a year, a product that's selling for six months, those are the customers we're looking for that need to buy more inventory and grow. Uh, you fill out the application, connect your store through API so that we can pull all the data to to check the what we check on the product. And then within a day or two, you'll have an offer from us and we can sign and even get funded even sometimes within uh, 48 to 72 hours. So it's very simple and we'll be happy to help. Awesome. And I think this one's related. Uh, do I need a personal guarantee? No, we don't take any personal guarantees, no credit checks, no business liens. We're partnering on the inventory, so the only collateral we take is that inventory and the rights to sell it if something happens, and that's it. That's the simplicity of the product. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, next one, I believe, is for Alex. Uh, are there any differences to Amazon Prime Day strategy for different markets, such as the U.S. and U.K.? Uh, interesting. Um, I think it just comes down to the data again. I think I think a lot of brands find that the UK is a little bit higher margin, um, but also less opportunity in terms of the amount of people that are going to participate. Uh, at the end of the day, cash flow is king. So I'd run it back to the same questions. If if you have a lot of inventory and you have cash flow that's strong, you can be a bit more aggressive, regardless of which country you're in. Um, it really depends on what you're selling. Like you could be selling something that's not so competitive in the UK, but is completely awash with competition in the US and your strategy would definitely have to be different. So it really depends. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. Uh, and generally we, we do see the same as like generally cost of customer acquisition is lower uh, on, in the UK, but you're right. The market's not the same size. So <laughs> you do have to cater your strategy a little bit there. Absolutely. Uh, awesome. Uh, Jessica, I think this one's for you. Uh, what are some options for promoting my Amazon prime date deals off Amazon? Yeah. So a lot of the things that I went over, but I could, you know, go a little bit more in detail, um, you know, on social media that like, that's a huge one, um, because you're so free to speak in your brand voice in the way that you would normally do it with the images you'd normally use or the video. You can be a little bit more cheeky. You can, you know, things you can't do on Amazon. I think that's one I love to really um, push for because on Amazon, you have to meet the image requirements. You have to be really careful about how you even speak about promotions. Um, and promotional content. Sorry if you can hear that rooster. Um, <laughs> he loves to make an appearance. Um, but on your social media, you can really be like wide open. You can, you know, be funny. You can use imagery that's not acceptable for Amazon. You can do things to really engage with your brand and the voice of your brand. And I think that's probably your number one way off Amazon 
to drive that um, traffic back because you know, first of all, that these people are already interested in your brand. They're following your brand on social media. And then you have that opportunity to talk with them the way that they, you know, will kind of resonate and um, result in them going through and making a purchase. So that's my number one tip if I have to pick one for that. Awesome. And I think that, I think you kind of just touched on it there, like understanding the avatar of who your customer is and then utilizing, if we're using social media, if we're using content on other platforms, utilizing uh, imagery of people that are similar to that avatar, uh, because that's going to have a much bigger impact on the actual engagement with the content and the traffic and everything. I think that's a really good point. Um, awesome. Uh, next question was, uh, should I focus more on my advertising on sponsored products or other ad types? Yeah. So like I, I talked about this during the presentation, uh, sponsored products is where you're going to generate most of your sales. Sponsored brands is also where you want to invest some good money on advertising. Uh, sponsored display product targeting is another one I would consider as well. Uh, mainly targeting uh, your own products on a defensive standpoint, but also maybe some close competitors to try to take advantage of some of their traffic. Uh, but sponsored products is probably where you're going to spend the bulk of your money. It's probably where you're going to see the bulk of the return on advertising. Uh, and some of those other ad campaign types might lead to additional sales after the prime day period. Once we kind of shift to the retargeting focus. Uh, and I believe we have one more question. Uh, I've already sent a huge amount of stock. I think this is for you, Alex. I've already sent a huge uh, amount of stock to Amazon to prepare for a big prime day sales push. Don't I sort of have to focus on selling through that now and getting my money back? Uh, yes, <laughs> it depends. It depends. If you already have a lot of stock, I go back to what we said before. Cash flow is king. It's it's the most it's the biggest metric that can be a bottleneck for growth for an Amazon brand. So if you've invested a lot of your cash into inventory, you need to turn it back into cash. So that warrants a little bit more of an aggressive strategy for sure. But you also need to produce a cash flow forecast and some sensitivity analysis around that. If, if being super aggressive with your sales is going to mean you're going to have troubles down the line with restocking for quarter four or whatever, I would still pull away, just have slightly higher inventory days for a while. Be careful not to just be driving sales for no reason. But if it's part of a strategy you've already begun and there's already a lot of cash to invest in inventory, yes, it's probably good for you to push a lot of sales. Awesome. Thank you. And I believe that's all the questions uh, we have today. Uh, guys, I appreciate you joining me today uh, to speak to everybody. Hopefully all the listeners found it helpful. And uh, I think I speak for everyone when I say that I hope you have a great Prime Day and uh, that it's very successful selling for everybody. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.